gonna do an oil analysis, take an oil sample from the bypass system. And I'm thinking about finally changing the oil now at 69,000 miles. What is that? Like, oh, 115,000 kilometers or so, 116, 17, 18,000 kilometers. Because I want to put in the 530 heavy duty diesel. I want to get away from the 40 weight to maybe get another half a mile a gallon, which makes a big difference right now thanks to the Trudeau carbon uh, tax propaganda Biden inflation as well. Man, Washington, the prices are insane for fuel and diesel. $6 a gallon, awesome, right? <laughs> Okay, under the vehicle you can see my fuel filters with the lift pump and here's the dual bypass filtration system last I changed the filters was September last year September 2020 22 at 77k miles you can see September is written in there as well there it is and now I'm at 85,000 miles and like 200 85,200 miles so the truck oil in total has 69,000 um, miles on it exactly just right exactly 69,000 miles so this is how i'm going to do an oil analysis before i decided to change the oil i'm finally changing the oil at 69,000 miles and you just press the button and it squirts it out um, it's easier when the engine's running there's some pressure through there and this is of course the bypass filter absolute efficient at two microns and this is your full flow filter absolute eao 26 this is the ea bp 100 and this is absolute efficient at uh, I think it was 15 microns and 2 microns keeping the system that's why the system is clean at 69,000 miles like 115,000 kilometers now you can see those lines were running to the bypass system the oil positive negative feed and then they go to right here um, that essentially where goes where the original oil filter was and of course I drain the oil from the regular drain spot right there and uh, I just clean the whole area and get it all prepped up now. I like to work with a clean environment. And of course, wearing my eye protection. So, because uh, it sucks getting stuff in your eyes. So here is what we're using. We're using the Amsoil 5W30 Heavy Duty Diesel Oil. This is their fuel efficient premium formula. They've had this for a long time. I run it in my 7.3, uh, Ford 7.3, my 99. Right there, there's my 7.3. And I've been really liking the oil on that one. So let's put it in the Duramax. There it is, going in the Dirty D. Okay, and again, my new AA BP100, a new EAO26, and you know, I got my cleaners to do some cleaning, and I got my tools for the filters, and I'm gonna do a kit 402 is for the oil analysis, which I'll do first right now. And then I've got my 16, I think is a 16 for the drain plug. And I, I wish I had a big bucket, I can't find a big bucket. So I can use this, I can fill this up with, this is a 10 liters, but nothing, I'm gonna have to try to, and then I got this, and I'm trying not to make a mess at all. So really I need like a big bucket because they're, be, the, the truck takes around like 11, 12 quarts, and then the bypass system adds another two. So it's gonna be like 14 quarts in the system. So I, I don't have a pail, I need to find a pail. And so this is, when you open the oil analysis kit 402, it comes with a return, sealed envelope to mail it back comes with your nice clean container to do it um they, and then you have your form you can fill out um with your information on your vehicle and what structure it is you know filter change etc and i've already have an account going i already have my truck going for like you know i got 10 oil analysis on it so don't have to fill out too much information besides the name of the truck so not to make a mess Works out quick, huh? There we go. Just like that. Just a little more. There we go. Not too much mess. Nice, nice. Well, that sucked. I just did a little thought. I was like, hey, I should make sure I can loosen my oil filters before I drain the oil, right? And good thing I did that just for you know in case of any problems but I broke I broke it but I was still able to get it off with just holding that end and of course I have this one for the 20, EA26 but I broke it on getting the giant guy off the EABP100 I should find an end for one of those Woo! all right let's take a look this is what I'm doing guys so yeah 
just putting the bolt back in, emptied it once, and this is the second time. So I'm not overloading, I gotta fill up the container nicely and not making, look, no mess, no mess. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so yeah, just finishing up the final drain. And uh, I just loosened up these guys and they're just dripping the top stuff off and then I'll pull them out. And in the meantime, take these guys out, here's the EABP100, and then you put them in their own little case, and here's the EAO26, the full flow filter. 99% efficient at 20 microns, and like I said, this one was 98.7% um, efficient absolute at 2 microns. So, and we'll pre-fill them, we'll fill them up with oil, and they'll saturate and keep topping them up until they're full. Wet the ring, um, the nitride ring, whatever it's called, and uh, the seal. So this was actually one that's been opened for a long time from the previous truck. And like I said, you start filling up the filters. Oh, overfill. Actually, I forget. It's sometimes it works better like this way for the air, so it doesn't um, get an airlock. This is the way, so the air's at the top, right? There you go, now it doesn't go gulp, gulp, gulp. There's a little trick, tip and trip, tip, 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 trick, trick a trip. All right, and now this one is settled in more again. And that's why we use this box, so we don't make a mess. And again, he's getting to it as full as the possible, pretty much, and yeah. Oh yeah, I should mention why we do this, why we pre-fill the filters. So. If you have the filter empty and you start your engine, it's gonna be then filling the filter with oil, which means you're gonna have a leg in oil possibly reaching the top end of your engine, of the motor, right? The oil is coming from the oil pan, where, it's, where the pickup is, and it has to fill the filter. And in that time, you could have be running dry you know, you need lube on the top end, guys, all the time. So this prevents any lag and lubrication with the delay of filling the filters. And that's why you do it. Okay. Let's try to get these suckers off. They're just going to drip forever. Don't let it fall. And get... Whoa, like that. Holy crap. What did I just say? And these, like, like I said, these things were last changed at 77,000 miles. And now we're at 85,000 miles. So five, six, seven, eight thousand miles on these filters. I guess in one year. That's how I didn't. I don't drive much anymore. <laughs> oh, there. That one did a little better job. Didn't get it on my sleeve. All right, let's just get these gloves off and we'll start fresh. Okay, so I got everything sprayed and cleaned. Let's get a final little clean wipe. All right, and then we got the filter. Let's put on the full flow right here, guys. EO26 just filled. Make sure we got it on the right side. This was the side it went on. Still dripping on me. There we go. And then we got the, you know, we'll tighten it up first actually. Since I gotta get my tool out, hold on. Okay, so I got my little Amazon tool that fits on the bottom of the filter. I've already, by the way, I already tightened my right hand as much as I can. So at this point, well, the arrow's right there, a quarter turn or a half turn, something like that. Oh, there, it's freaking tight. Okay, well, the light's coming to an end. Oh, it's kind of jammed in there. Again, make sure we got oil on the seal. Nicely lubed up. Oh look, you can put on the date of service. <laughs> That's smart. I should have written on that first. Okay. Get a little clean with brake fluid so I can get my tool on it. And not have a slipping on it. Alright. 
Yeah, the light's getting dim. We're going to tighten it again. The, the EABP is like this, so we just uh, a little bit more. With this broken tool. There, it should be good. All right. Yeah, cool guys. Nice and clean, no oil residue. So now let's fill up the tank with the 530 now. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready to uh, put the drain plug in and I was looking at the 16 millimeter end. So it's a 16 millimeter hex nut. It says 62 foot pounds. And I just read on a few forums too. A lot of people kind of disagree. That's a lot of on that oil pan. Um, I'm going to set it to 50 foot pounds, but first I'm going to do it by hand and get my actual feel and then uh, go from there to kind of feel how much more I have to reach 50 or possibly 60. All right, so it's still just dripping slowly. That's enough drippage. Let's put the drain plug in with the copper washer. Get a little clean. We're all used to doing this by hand. Typically, I never had a torque wrench for all these years previously. Well, let's just give a hand feel here. Choked up on the wrist. Okay. And typically, that's pretty much good and tight. That's good and tight. So let's test what that is with the torque wrench. It could have gone a little tighter. I'd probably do it one more if I had to. Okay, and we're back. So let's put it on my Milwaukee torque wrench and we'll see what 50 foot pounds is like. Okay. So it's almost good and tight. It's almost 50 foot. Let's actually hit it. I just I don't have the angle, guys. Remember, it said 62, so oh, this is a tough angle. Here we go. Oh, there's 50. So just close. Let's do 55, just to be sure. We don't want this falling out. Okay, 55. That's plenty, guys. That's good and tight and tight. So it's nice to just check with the torque wrench. Okay, I'm finally ready to add the 530. This one only has a quart left in it. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So anyways, I put a paper towel around because you don't want to get all the oil on your belts. And remember, you go from bottoms up like this when you, so you don't have any issues. And, uh... Ooh, I went too quick. But anyways, so we're going to put around 10 quarts in here. We'll figure it out as we go. Don't want to overfill it and have to retorque that drain plug. <laughs> but yeah, I felt pretty happy with the 55 foot pounds. Like I said, so I, you know, I'm pulling in 49 foot pounds on that big wrench just by the angle I had. So um, 62, you know, it's pretty high, but I'm sure it would have handled it. But um, what I read on the Duramax forum, a lot of people kind of think that's really close to stripping it and we don't want to risk it. And the copper washer could get crushed, you know, so it's got a copper washer, it shouldn't need million pounds a rooster a rooster going crazy anyways there we get some angle at it burp, burp, burp. here at the farm guys exciting exciting running this new 530 in the duramax uh we'll see if we can get on average 10 and a half miles a gallon i'll have to start measuring my fuel exactly where you not just you the digital um, fuel mileage indicator on the trucks digital is always off a half or a one mile a gallon more realistically so it'll say I'm getting 11 miles a gallon but if you physically fill up the tank to the absolute brim and then drive you know whatever miles you do and then fill it up to the absolute brim and calculate it you'll realize it's like oh I'm not getting 10 I'm, or 11 I'm really getting 10 and then sometimes you even get nine if you're in a, driving in a headwind or driving on a long flat with cruise control on. I get the best mileage actually when I'm just on and off the throttle in the mountains, even if you're going up steep grid, um, steep incline. All right, here's the next full gallon. So this will make uh, four, eight, um, nine quarts in total, plus the, the ones in the filters. Check now, and I believe we'll be right on. There you go, so if you guys can look, it's one nib from the full, the full, 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 right? If you're focusing right there. So that's right there, it's right there, or right on that side down. 
So uh, we're gonna start the engine for maybe, you know, till it fills up all the filter lines, whatever's been emptied. Okay, let's do this. Remember, we'll check all our lines below as well. Oh, did I put the cap on? No, I didn't. And pull this plastic, ah, that would've been dumb. Pull this out, because it would've sucked into the belt. Let's do this. Moment, the moment. And go. so far all right let's turn it off and check yeah and turn it off and we'll check the oil level let's do this it might take a while to settle down a bit but oh yeah empty on the stick there you go empty on the stick so let's uh, add another uh, two one two quarts all right one more quart out of this one because we're getting up the line. One, two, two. All right, that might be good. Oh yeah, look at that, guys. Notice it's already black. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, so we'll run the engine again and check it after we run it for a bunch of minutes now. Yeah, I'm excited. Fuel mileage. Better fuel mileage in the tyrannical world we live. Oh my god! Oh, ah, the oil. Well, 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 Marcel. What are you doing? Forgetting shit. Sounds nice and quiet, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, guys. So, finally changed the oil 69,000 miles on that 540 which was the CJ4 Max Duty. And now we've got 69,000 miles with many, many oil analysis every year. One time I did two in a year as well, just because I had an issue with my injector and I wanted to see if there's any fuel dilution. But uh, yeah, let's get underneath and check again. Okay, and there we have it guys. One tick from absolutely off the scale. It's exactly where you want. Essentially 90% of filled without being overfilled. Yeah, and uh, I went and cleaned underneath with brake cleaner, so I'll get underneath and see if I have to tighten any lines from, I mean, just the slowest drip, but uh, still worth the tightening. Okay, and we're back. So there's no, f after cleaning it, the engine was running as well the whole time. So no drip. So I'll come back here and check it, you know, after I drive for another bit, head her home, etc. So yeah, good to go. And this area is all clean as well. And of course the bypass filter, super clean. No oil dripping. Good to go, guys. Done. Oil change is done. I'm good for another uh, at least 69,000 miles. Let's do it up. Do it up. Hey everybody, it's the next day, October 24th. Took the sample yesterday, October 23rd. Fluid time, 69,260 miles. Component time, 85,160 miles. So, yeah guys, because I changed the oil at 15,900 miles. That's when I installed the AMS oil when I bought the truck, the 2009 Duramax Chevy 3500 LMM engine. So yeah, there you go, guys. I've changed the oil. That first time I've changed the oil since 2017, March 15th, 2017. Of course, changed the filters. And so this is using Oil Analyzers Incorporated. And um, yeah, guys, so sending it out. So we'll, let's get the results by PDF in a few days. Cheers. Oh, and here's the sample, of course. 
And so you just, um, they give you a little bag, you throw it in there and you're good to go. Okay, so I got the oil analysis report back, completed on October 30th. If you look over in the right corner, completed on October 30th, which was Monday, yesterday. And they received it on the Friday prior to that. And I took the sample a week earlier on the 23rd and uh, took me a couple days to hit the post office and so on and so forth. I just used Canada Post and shipped the bottle over in their little prepackaged thing. It was like 15, 16 bucks for shipping thanks to uh, Trudeau and Biden inflation on the fuel prices and everything. So here you have its component ID, right? And it's my 2009 Duramax LMM and my secondary ID. Eng diesel engine, General Motors, 6.6 .6 Duramax, some capacities around 12 quarts. And then here is my account information. I removed my address, but uh, if anybody needs to get a hold of me, there is my phone number right there. Um, out of Kelowna, BC for Amsoil products. And here you have on the top right, they give you a quick overall report of severity based on the comments. And they give you a comments. And this company is Oil Analyzers Incorporated. And they have many stations in North America. Um, oh, maybe like 15 businesses um, where you can send your oil analysis to in the USA. And then in Canada, there's one in Edmonton and one in uh, Mississauga, Ontario. So I sent mine to Edmonton. And now here we have full flow bypass is my system. I'm running an Amsoil dual bypass filtration system as we went over and did the filters. And the bypass system is rated at two microns. And for product information over here, I'm using my Amsoil and I was using um, what the top up was the Amsoil Signature Series Max Duty right there. And it's the 540. And of course, as you guys saw, I just switched it for the Amsoil 5W30 HDD. And so we'll go into their, their comments here, but let's take a look at the spectrograph of wear metals, of additive metals, contaminant metals, and multi-source metals in parts per million, PPM. And you'll notice that there is four samples listed right now on this graph. Obviously, there's the sample one to three that they don't show at the moment because I don't know why. It should, I wish it would show it, but it doesn't. But I'd have to go look back at other analysis reports from earlier in the years. And you can see the dates for number four was March 2019, March 1st. And then I did another one at September 16th, 2019. And then I did another one on December 19th, 2016. This is when I had um, a knock going on my engine and I was trying to diagnose it, what was going on with a, um, a fuel injector. And, um, and then the next one is October 22. Obviously, I didn't drive much in 2020 or 2021 thanks to Bullshit 19. So I did a hiatus of 20 and 21. I just, let's say we got 44,000 miles on that sample and in through the 2021 and 2022 October I only put on 18,000 miles on the lube or from 59 up to 78 again 59.9 so essentially 60 so 18,000 miles uh, respectively and then of course the re most recent sample was October 23rd, 2023, almost a year and, you know, and five, six, seven days later from the previous sample from 62,000 miles to 69,000 miles, again, from 78,000 miles to 85,000 miles on the unit, the LMM Duramax engine. And as you can see, I never changed the oil, never changed the oil, never changed the oil, never changed the oil. And I never did change the oil since sample one back in 2017 of um, March 2017 when I first installed the Amsoil, when I first bought the truck and changed all the fluids. And there you go, I finally changed the oil for the first time since 2017. And um, so let's go back up to the spectrographs. And so wear metals, these are parts per million of the samples that you can see the last four samples. And the first one was obviously 2019. Oh, by the way, so it, for the, it was the inject. I, was, I took those three samples in 2019 because I had the knock and I wanted to see if I had excessive fuel in the oil. Fuel dilution, right over here. Fuel dilution, less than one, less than one, less than one. 
So I didn't have my fuel injector just pouring in fuel, and which went bypassed and then unburnt and then went into the oil. Um, I actually, ironically, um, after all that, with once I changed the injector, I actually went less than two estimate. Uh, so the new injector actually had a little more fuel dilution, but still, well, well, no issues there. So back in 2019, we started with 74 parts per million of iron, and it went up. And then, of course, if we look at the time, um, let's change color here. Okay, so I got the red pen now. And um, so that was, again, at um, miles on the oil, was at 38,000 miles on the oil, 52,000 on the truck. We had 74 parts per million. And then when I took the sample later on with 42,000 miles, it went up to 107 parts per million. And don't be alarmed by 100 parts per million. There's a reason it's yellow and not red. You know, back to um, when they, at the top here, it, no, normal, abnormal, critical. Critical is red, and then you can see abnormal, and then is right there is number two. And so abnormal wear, regular wear, uh, nothing to even mention. And then the next sample, number five, from 107 to sample six, we went to only 2,000 more miles and it went down to 100, 000, 100 parts per million. And then from 44,000 miles from 2019 to this October 2022, um, what do we have there? 18,000 miles from 44 to 62. It went up to 122 or up 22 parts per million. And then from 20, a, a year later and 7,000 miles later, it went up another you know 19 parts per million to 41 and so i would be more concerned and this would be in the critical cons of iron wear and parts per million if it was more in the three four five hundred parts per million and i've seen that before with motorcycles and such race bikes where you can have a significant amount of wear other people's vehicles etc um, so in the low hundred is no big deal and then the next one so that's iron and so it's graphing. And now if we go and look at, there is a graph for iron. And there it is, iron in the blue. So it you know went up a little bit and then down and just on a trend like this. But the, it's the same oil. So more of that iron wear is, happens over time and it's being added to the oil. If what you need, to, a problem is if you're going like this and then all of a sudden it jumps up like that, you know, and then you're gonna be like, okay, why did it just jump up? Like it's not on a normal path. What's going on? Is there a critical engine issue? Why am I having a critical amount of wear instantly, right? So let's go back to the original. Next is chromium. And you can see one, two, 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 nothing, absolutely normal. Nickel, zero, zero, one, 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 nothing to um, contest. Aluminum wear. So because it's a diesel, there's not too much aluminum in the engine. There's more iron wares for everything. And uh, now aluminum, if this was my race bike, my BMW, it would be not iron wear. It would be aluminum wear in the 50 or 100 parts per million, etc. And um, so next one we have is copper. 261, 270, 227, 134, 135. It is dropping. My copperware is being having less over those miles and over those years. And you got to consider every time, every year, I'm changing the filters as well. So you got to consider that it can clean the system a little better. Lube changed, filter changed, yes, but then no, no, and then yes and yes. So also keep that in mind from the 19, I only changed the filter once in those three oil analysis. So here we have copper, copper, as you can see, we, like we said, it's going along and then it's dropping, it's dropping. And these ones, I didn't change the filter, right? In any of these guys, the, I think it was just the first one and then last year and then this year. And um, so, yeah, and then we're very consistent, nice and perfect. Next, we're looking at lead parts per million, four, two, two, eight, and nine. So lead has increased in the oil of wear metals from the engine. 
still we're talking parts per million here <laughs> under 10 it is nothing to consider that's why it is green it's just something to to note whoa what is the cat doing outside it just jumped off of a, <laughs> somebody scared him somehow anyway sorry um and then we have 10 2 2 2 4 and 4 again totally super low parts per million under 10 and here we have lead and tin on the top right, and you can see they're all just on the bottom here through the filters. Uh, nothing to look at on the graph. Next, we're looking at cadmium, and it's all zero. Silver, all zero. Vanadium, vanadium, how you pronounce it. So that is for the wear metals, guys. So the only thing to note was really is copper is going down in terms of engine wear. And iron is going slightly up in terms of engine wear over those many miles and those three years. Next, we're going in contaminant metals. These are contaminant metals such as silicone. Now, silicone is actually dirt. So if you take your little rocks and your little mini dirt and you grind them all up, and when you put them in a graph, they are silicone. So silicone is dirt in your oil. It is a contaminant. Right, and so we back in um, 2019 of of March when we changed the filter. I mean, this was before changing the filter. The sample obviously was 18, and then the filter was changed, and then it went up to 22, and then it went down to 19, and uh, and then I believe we changed the filter um, at on this one. And then that one was 22, and years later, and then we changed the filter, and then we just had 24 parts per million. So super clean oil um, the lowest I've ever seen on silicone would be in my race bike because I change the oil every race weekend due to fuel dilution so we're talking about under 10 parts per million so considering the many many miles uh, you know from 7,000 miles to 18,000 miles between those ones and the silicone is just super low parts per million thanks to the bypass system of course and uh, you got to do a good air filter as well so here we have on the graph silicone in blue, and you can see it went up slightly, then down slightly, and just slowly going up in the 20 parts per million. Next we have sodium. Sodium, now you guys know that, it's kind of like salt, right? <laughs> Seven parts per million, 10, nine, nine, 10, nothing to concern ourselves with. Now potassium, that's a contaminant metal from coolant. You know, if you have coolant with potassium and you have a leak, all of a sudden, instead of being eight, it's going to be five, six hundred, one thousand. And this is why oil analysis is great because you'll be like, all of a sudden, you're going to catch a coolant leak on the in into your engine oil before catastrophe on the side of the road where you have no coolant and your engine oil is completely contaminated with, with coolant. And you're going to have, inc and now your engine wear is going to be off the charts. Everything is going bad. Your engine is failing. You're towing your truck. So it's a good heads up. So I obviously I got no coolant leak. Potassium is just nothing to do with any leakage. No issue. It'll be in the hundreds of to thousands. And now we go on to titanium, zero. Molybdenum, molybdenum, however you say it, 28, 28, 22, 16. It's on the way down. These are the multi-source metals. Antimony, um, 21000. Mangan manganese zero one 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 nothing lithium zero 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 i don't know why there's one lithium in there but uh, who knows it could have been a kind of the slightest little contamination in the sample who knows lithium i have no all those batteries i've been hanging out with right and then boron boron 33 29 29 38 and 24 so it's gone down and then up to 38 last year and then down to 24. Now I'm looking back on the graph here. Of course, we have silicone, which was the dirt going nowhere. Yeah, so again, there is your silicone. You got super low um, dirt, hardly any dirt in the system. And, um, and if we go, there's the chromium, aluminum, nickel on this graph right here. Uh, the aluminum wear went up to five parts per million, really nothing. Um, Silicone, there's the sodium, potassium, molybdenum, and men, magnesium, calcium. A calcium is, oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves with this. 
Okay, so now we're moving on to additive metals. These are the metals and parts per million that are in the oil. You are replenishing these additives with top-up, and you're replenishing these additives when you use a fuel additive, such as Amsoil's um, diesel concentrate, and it's actually helping your oil last longer for extended drain intervals. So magnesium, magnesium, here we go. And then we got calcium, barium, phosphorus, and zinc. So, you know, sulfur, phosphorus, and zinc are important for when you have metal-metal contact. They are like a barrier that protects, it coats the metal. So when there is metal-metal contact, there is lubrication. So the barium, the phosphorus, the zinc, the magnesium, they are a lubricant for metal-to-metal -metal contact. When the oil barrier, essentially the float barrier is broken and the metal actually does touch each other, they are there to coat and kind of be like a little force field of protection with those because they're literally zinc and phosphorus are these metals that then they become the wear and not the actual engine. So magnesium in the oil was at 848, 965, 865, 781, 830. So you can see it's going up and down. And as I, you know, when I change the filters and I add two more new quartz, that is replenishing the additives with the new oil. And the same thing with the diesel concentrate. And calcium, this is what keeps your engine oil clean. Calcium is a detergent. It is cleaning the oil. And so we had 1101, 1288, 1189, 1500 it went up to, and 1527. So it is rising. So with me changing the oil and topping up, it is just improving more. So you need to have certain levels. You know, you're going to need to have a minimum of, say, 900 parts per million of calcium. When you buy other brands of oils, they're going to have, you know, less. It could be 500, 600 parts per million. There's going to be less phosphorus, less zinc. That's why Amazon even sells a high zinc formula 10W40. It's for those old Chevy Corvettes with the tappets on the top, which need high amounts of phosphorus. It's the opposite of your low ultra sulfur diesel. High ultra sulfur diesel is going to have more protection, more lubrication, more. It's going to help your fuel pump. It's going to help your injectors. The, the emissions are killing your vehicle, okay? It's making it last less. It's actually making more vehicles being thrown away. Uh, the government is doing everything backwards. There's nothing is helping save the environment. You're just, it's just China style with all the products that you use once. You buy a printer, throw it away because the print cartridges ch cost more than the printer. Well, now your, your, you know, your toaster breaks down, you buy a new one. There's no fixing it. And it's the same thing with the emissions. Now, ultra, so low, ultra low sulfur diesel is wrecking your vehicles, and that's why we had to have additives to put it in. It's all consequential bad. The, the emission systems that make your engine run hotter hurt your engine oil more. People are they're running a thinner viscosity oils in your engines to save them money because they have to make the government quotas for fuel mileage for their fleet. And if we put a 20 weight in across our whole fleet, we're going to save a mile per gallon across our fleet. And that's going to save us tens of millions of dollars. But you guys, as the customer, your engine's going to wear faster. You got to change your oil more. That's more waste oil. That's more engines. That's more vehicles being thrown away. It's absolutely ridiculous. So anyways, back on track, guys. And then phosphorus, another uh, another additive metal to prevent wear, 938, 1085, 993, 1146, 1146. I love how those two are identical from a year apart. And then zinc, 1171, 1351, 1302, 1277, 1292. It is increasing up and down. It is monitoring. Okay, and so there and you have your magnesium, calcium, barium, phosphorus, zinc, and you see them on the, the charts here. Just maintaining. The oil would, con so I've continued to go another 100,000 miles. It's going to just continue to go on these same paths. The, tr the oil is not going worse. It's not losing additives with what I'm doing in terms of changing the filters once a year, topping up when needed. And, of course, using a fuel additive. Everything is being maintained. So it's just, I'm killing it. This oil as is, well, it's, it's just not just resample, but it's like just monitor your trends and continue doing what you're doing, and the oil will last forever. Forget about 69,000 miles on the oil. What about, let's go, 140,000 miles. What's going to change? What is going down? The only thing that is increasing is the ironware. But that's obvious. You're obviously going to have 20 parts per million of ironware every year. And that is nothing. 20 parts per million. 
million. That is like, oh, this oil. Oh, yeah. So after another 10 years, I'm going to have another 100 parts per million of ironware. Like no issues whatsoever. Okay, I know this is going long information, but there's so much here to say. So back to our date samples, date received, lube time, unit time, a lube changed, lube added, filter changed, fuel dilution. We already talked about that. It's not really going anywhere. Soot, excessive soot. This is an important one because diesel engines produce soot and you don't want your engine oil over sooted. Now, you know if you when you put oil in your diesel engine from the previous soot, from the previous oil, it, it's going to blacken it instantly and then the soot darkens your engine oil. Like that's why diesel engine oil is black. So when your engine oil is black, it doesn't mean it's dirty. It doesn't mean you have excessive soot, you know, because we got 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 1.0. The soot is not changing whatsoever. I don't have excessive soot whatsoever. And then of course, water percentage, less than one, less than one, less than one, less than one. And uh, let's look at the graph. Okay, over here, fuel dilution soot. Here is um, the soot going down and then slightly up to one. And yeah, fuel dilution not even on the damn chart. Now, while we're here, we might as well just look at the graph for viscosity. So the red number is viscosity measured at 100 Celsius. So this is the second number. This is your operating temperature viscosity, which is always around 100 Celsius. That's the measurement for it. So when you buy a 5W40 or a 10W40 or a 0W40, this is the 40. This is the 40 weight, right? For um, S-A-E. It's a 40 weight, S-A-E. Hopefully you can hear me as I'm writing and the pen's not making noise. Um, and so that there is a category for a 40 weight. And you can see here we're right on the charts of 15, 15, 14.9. So here we have it. Here we have it. 15.3, 15.5. The viscosity increased the slightest amount back to 15.3. Then it decreased 14.8 and it decreased to 14.5. So if I jumped out a grade... So we have to look up what the grades are. I don't remember what a 40 grade is, but a 40 grade could be, say, 13.8 to 16. And if, you, if that fell down to 14, 0, 13.9, we'll have to look up the grade again. Then I'm in fear of, okay, it's going to become thinner viscosity. It's going to turn into a 30 weight oil, which I just put in the truck, which is actually no issue whatsoever because a 30 weight is going to offer plenty of protection. I guess we'll see if the parts per million of ironware go up slightly more with a 30 weight. But the fact is when you're using Amsoil, because of the additives, because the oil is not breaking down from thermal, because it is not thickening up because of burning... Um, out uh, thermal burn essentially and burning out uh, say small molecules and leaving back the fat ones and then the viscosity increases the opposite of decreasing okay i just looked it up on my other phone guys so a 30 grade sae viscosity a 30 grade is 9.3 is the minimum and the maximum is less than 12.5 so we're, I'm, I'm at 14.5 and it's not going down very fast. So it's 12.5. It's far away. So 40 grade is 12.5 at the minimum and 16.3. Okay, so I just wrote it out here. I'm sorry for the mess. It's hard to write. So the minimum is 12.5. The maximum is 16.3. So the Amsoil's 40 weight oil started high. I don't even, I'd have to look it up, but it, maybe it started at 15.5 or 15.6, or maybe it started at 15.3. But, so it's on the high end. So when you buy an oil that's a 40 grade, it could be, it could be a 12.6 and they call it a 40 grade, but it's actually a really thin freaking 40 grade. And it's, so like, that's the problem with other oils too. It's like, where are they on the graph? And why would they make a 40 grade start at the very bottom of the grade and not the middle of the grade, right? Or the middle upper of the grade. You got to understand there's a huge difference between those 12.5 and 16.3. And of course, back to the 30 weight, it's 12.5 down to 9.3, and then 9.3 would be so on and down for the 20 weight oil. And a 50 weight oil is 16.3 up to 21.9. So when you have a 50 weight for your Harley, is it a 20 or is it a 16.4? And this makes a huge difference in terms of protection for the wear, for the, the weight of protection, the weight to break that barrier. Like a ship in the sea is how much it holds up for the weight before it sinks and has metal-to-metal -metal contact or essentially the boat sinks. So viscosity. 
no issues with jumping out a grade. And even if I did hit a 30 weight, it's not like an end of all ends for me because I actually want a 30 weight for better fuel mileage at the moment with thanks to Biden, Trudeau's inflation, carbon tax, a political carbon tax where the money doesn't go to anything except for feeding their friends and their own political interests, which doesn't help the environment whatsoever. The carbon tax does not improve the environment whatsoever. It's just a freaking tax, 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 tax. So they can have more power, more control, and create more inflation to make everybody poorer and make it everyone harder, make everybody get onto their system where we'll pay you to live and you suckle at the teeth of the government. All right, let's continue on. After viscosity, we have the acid number. It doesn't apply. And we have the base number at 4.76, 4.69, 4.11, 3.94, 3.42. So... The base number D4739 test is measures the oil's reserve, its remaining alkalinity. This procedure is used to determine the oil's reserve alkalinity and any depletion changes are always measured from the new oil level. So when the oil started, what did it come with, right? Did it start with um, 8 total base number and now I'm at 3.42. And so nowhere, so you would be concerned when this 3.42 hits 1. So when the, it hits 1 or below, that is when I need to change the oil. So at this rate, um, i got to figure out what it actually started at for this oil. There's high TBN oils and there's low ones. Um, let me take a look. Okay, so I'm looking up on the Amazon website and looking under the synthetic, the Signature Series Max Duty Synthetic Oils. It gives, um, it uses a different test though, the total base number test of ASTM D2896. When this one is using the D4739. So they're bo- those are those tests use different ways to measure the base number, the total base number. And so I'm not sure if they would actually give you a different result in terms of the number or not. That would be for another day. You guys can research it, the ASTM D2896 versus the D4739. Um, so if it was using the other test, 2896, it, it the oil started at 10.1. Um, so I'm not sure if these numbers coincide that the oil was at 4.76 since 2017. Um, it's possible. Uh, it's maybe not. Well, it's, the video is getting a little long. 27 minutes after the installation. Wow. So, but as the trends are going down, obviously it's going to last uh, another whatever, many years, 20,000 miles, 40,000 miles, that might be the limiting factor. But notice they also don't even make it, it's not even a green, it's not even an orange, so I'm assuming those tests are giving different results. So let's move on, oxidization, 13, 15, 15, 18, 20, just slightly increased, nitration, 9, 11, 11, 12, 14. Nothing to concern ourselves with. And here is the acid number, you can't even see it, the base number, and... Bay, oh, base number 4739 and base number 2896. This is strange. Like, and I have to give them a call. Why is it not showing up? Just the base. Why are they only doing this number now? They switched it up, and so it's slightly depleting. But it's going to take a long time before it eventually gets down and down to uh, 1. So now here's the historical comments, you know, from the first one in 2019. Um, obviously, it was back. I changed the oil was first changed initially and installed in 2017. Flag data does not indicate any immediate need for maintenance action. Continue to observe the trend and monitor equipment and fluid conditions. Copper, copper is most likely leaching into oil vial via the oil cooler core tubing. This typically does not require maintenance action unless there is evidence of coolant in the oil. Iron is at a minor level. Iron sources in the engine can be cylinder liners, iron pistons, hardened steel camshafts, crankshafts, gears, hardened rocker arms, valve bridges, alloy steel cam follower rollers, etc. Boron is a slightly low for this lubricant. Boron levels may decline naturally with use, so this is not a cause for concern. Oil is suitable for continued use. Observe trends in future tests. Your note was taken into consideration, whatever my note was. And then we go on to the next one. And this is when I'm concerned about oil analysis or I'm concerned about fuel dilution from my injector knock. Flag data, not the same that continue to observe trends, monitor coppers at a monitor, copper, same thing, leaching oil can no maintenance. My silicone sources at our minor level, um, it's, you know, and silicone sources are dirt, alumina, silica, seals and gaskets, or even the gasket material 
you know, my truck, when I first installed the oil, it was at 15,900 miles. The truck was not, it's just getting broken. It only had 355 hours on it versus now we got, what, 3,000. Environmental con, boron is slightly low. Um, oil is suitable for continued use. Resample, 7,000 miles. So then a resample. And then the same thing, resample in 7,000 miles or 125 hours. And then the last one, um, same thing, no need for action. Continue to observe trends. Moderate level silicone, minor chromium, minor, and boron is slightly low again, naturally decline. Oil is suitable for continued use, resample in 7,000 miles or 125 hours, but of course I changed the oil. And then into the comments here, um, obviously back to the you know, eight, sample number eight. Flag data does not indicate any immediate need for action, continue to observe trends. Iron is at a moderate level, iron sources for engine, we already talked about the same thing. Um, bearing bushing metal is at a moderate level, braces at minor level, chrome, etc. Boron is slightly low again, and lubricant filter change acknowledged. So it's been done. So that's it, guys. So again, copper could just be leaching from the copper pipes. Iron is just slightly going up, and boron is just slightly declining with natural, um, and that is a multi source metal. It's not a wear metal, it's a multi source metal in the oil. And uh, so, yeah, I would say from these trends, I could have a conversation. I wish we had the previous samples to compare to. I'd have to phone them and get them to send me a graph with all of them, and maybe I'll do another update on that. We'll look at the original right back to March of 2017 installed when it was at 15,900 miles. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you learned something, and you can see that I could have literally gone, well, from 2017 to 2017. I probably could have gone, you know, Oh, good 10 years on that same oil with the way the trends are going. I guess the only thing would be a total base number. Thanks for watching, everybody. Ernie Racing. Cheers.